Hey, what's up everyone? This is Chris from Brick Players Union, and in honor of May the 4th, in this video we're going to take a look at some of the sets from my LEGO Star Wars collection. Now, I realize that by the time this video is released, May the 4th will have come and gone, but unfortunately some things in the real world needed my attention, so it delayed the release of this video. Now, I grew up watching the Star Wars movies from the original trilogy, which was episodes 4, 5, and 6, so all of my LEGO sets are from those three movies. So in this video, we're going to take a look at my sets from Episode 4, and I'll have separate videos where I show my sets from Episode 5 and Episode 6. So, let's take a look at my sets from Star Wars Episode 4, A New Hope. So, as Episode 4 begins, Princess Leia has acquired the plans to the Evil Empire's new weapon, so she hides those plans on her droid R2-D2. Next, Princess Leia's ship comes under attack, so R2-D2, along with another droid named C-3PO, are able to escape in their droid escape pod, which is set 9490 from 2012. The droid escape pod crash lands on the desert planet of Tatooine, where the droids are captured by Jawas and sold to Luke Skywalker's Uncle Owen. While cleaning R2-D2, Luke Skywalker discovers the message from Princess Leia that contains not only the plans to the secret weapon of the evil empire, but also makes mention of someone named Obi-Wan Kenobi. Luke wonders if Obi-Wan Kenobi could be a man he knows as Old Ben Kenobi, so he gathers up the droids and hops in his land speeder and goes off on a search for Old Ben. Now, the land speeder is set 8092 from 2010, and it's the earlier version of the land speeder, which is not quite as good of a version as the one that came in the Mos Eisley Cantina set. Most notably because the earlier set, the one you see here, uses tan plates for the main body of the land speeder, whereas in the newer version, they use the medium nougat color, which is a lot truer to the color of the land speeder in the movie. Ben tells Luke that he is Obi-Wan Kenobi, but that he doesn't recall owning any droids. So he suggests going to Mos Eisley so that they can hire someone to take them to Princess Leia so they can return the droids to her. When they reach Mos Eisley, they decide to look for a pilot that they can hire in the Mos Eisley Cantina, which is set 75052 from 2014. Now, this is a set that I haven't built yet because I really want to be able to build a large-scale mock for it, and I just don't have the space to do it yet. It is one of the most important scenes in not only this movie, but in the entire Star Wars saga, because this is the site where Luke actually meets Han Solo for the first time, and if this scene doesn't happen, pretty much the whole movie and the whole Star Wars series doesn't happen. So, anyway... Like I said, this is where Luke and Obi-Wan meet Han Solo and Chewbacca and hire them to take them and the droids back to Princess Leia on board their ship, the Millennium Falcon, which this version is set 7965 from 2011. On board the Millennium Falcon, here we can see Han and Chewie in the cockpit. And Obi-Wan begins Luke's Jedi training in the ways of the Force. Next, our heroes learn that Princess Leia has been captured by the Evil Empire, so what started out as a mission to return the lost droid ends up becoming a rescue mission instead. Now, during the rescue attempt, our heroes themselves are captured, but Obi-Wan sacrifices himself so that he can provide a distraction to give our heroes the time they need to escape. But the escape wasn't easy. During the escape, they have a run-in with the TIE Fighter, which is set 9492 from 2012. But our heroes are able to destroy the TIE Fighter and escape unharmed. Now, with the plans that are stored in R2-D2, the Rebellion is able to stage an attack mission against the new weapon of the Evil Empire which includes Luke piloting an X-Wing Starfighter, which is set 9493 from 2012. Now, during Luke's trench run, he is pursued by Darth Vader in his TIE Advanced, which is set 8017 from way back in 2007. But, 
Here comes the Millennium Falcon to the rescue, which knocks Darth Vader and his TIE Advanced out the frame, clearing the way for Luke to destroy the Death Star, which is set 10188 from 2008. And that is another set that I'm actually waiting to build until I have the proper space to display that properly because it is a set that definitely needs plenty of room. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed taking a look at my Lego sets from Star Wars Episode 4, A New Hope. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have not yet subscribed, please do. It would be greatly appreciated. And if you have a minute before you go, please leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. And on that note, I'd like to thank you again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.